Now, even if you are new to Photoshop, one of the easiest to use and newest features in Photoshop is Sky Replacement. Now, Sky Replacement is a huge fad in photo editing software these days because so many advances have been made that have perfected the results. It's hard not to jump on this bandwagon and see what kind of results you can get. But do not mistake, even though I believe in this process and I use it myself, don't go running down the street with your eyes closed replacing skies. You have to be careful when you do it and be able to admit when, well, on this image it doesn't work. It's not a perfect science. It doesn't work on every image, even on images that are crying for a sky replacement. You've got to be ready to abandon your efforts and move on. Now, as we take a look at the Photoshop workspace, I'm going to look at four images here. This one, this one, and this one as an example of where it doesn't work and where you really ought to just walk away. And then this one, that gives you really good results, but also why you might not want to uh, do it here. So let's go ahead and start with this one, and I think it's obvious uh, what we would do, but let me show you what not to do initially, because that's as, as important as knowing how to do it right and knowing when to do it. So let's go to Image, and we look at Edit, Sky Replacement. You get this little panel up here, and it's going to throw up the last image that I had loaded the last time I did this, and this is what not to do. Now, it should be immediately obvious why this is what you don't want to do. Because on the foreground, you have the sun coming from basically my 7, 730, 8 o'clock position about 45 degrees off the horizon. The sky, the sun is coming from the 1 o'clock position at about 10 degrees off the horizon. You've got one image with sunlight coming from two directions. Now, anyone can look at this image and go, something ain't right. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's go down here. And, I mean, this is one. Now, you might like that. Aesthetically and from a, a color palette standpoint, you may think that's gorgeous. But it doesn't. How can I put this? It's, it's not real. It can't possibly be real. And what you're looking for is a way to accentuate your existing image. You want to add to what's there. Now let's look at this one. Now this one's getting a little closer. Let's move this around a little bit and see what we can uh, put in here. And I like these venticular clouds that are in this image, say right about there. And that's getting closer, but now the other issue you have is that the background, the sky replacement image, has sunset light on it. Again, about 10, 15 degrees off the horizon. Now, it's coming from the same direction. Both sunlight is coming from about this 7, 7.30 position. But the foreground is about 45 degrees, maybe 50 degrees off the horizon. The sky is coming at about 10 degrees off the horizon. So again, it doesn't work. It doesn't match. So what you have to do is you've got to get your foreground image to match the new sky replacement image. So let's take a look at a couple that might work. Let's look at this one. Now we're getting somewhere, although there's a lot of haze in that background image that doesn't exist in the foreground image. Let's look at this one. Now we're getting somewhere. This is a little more believable. Let's look at this one, and I think we can begin to make sense of something like that, except look at this. The sun is coming from the 5 o'clock position instead of the 7 o'clock position. So one way to cure that is to simply click this box right here called Flip, and you can flip it, and now we've got an image that matches. Now that's a whole lot better. We can get these edges to match up. Now we've got an image to where things make sense. Now it's just a matter of subjectivity as to whether this is the specific image you want to use or not. But the point is, is that it works from a practical standpoint in terms of direction of the sunlight. Let's look at this one. I like that a lot better. Now, see, this one's making sense. You got high clouds on a nice, clear day. You don't need to worry about the mountains. Pull that horizon down, and we can even reposition this a little bit. Now we're making sense. Now we have foreground and background, or we have foreground and sky that really makes sense. So the lesson here is when you replace a sky, make sure it makes sense. In other words, the viewer wants to say, wow, what a great sky. Not, you've got sunlight coming from two different directions in the same image. 
nice sky replacement effort, but no cigar. Now let's look at what we would really want to do on this image. And let's try this one. Nope. Let's try this one. And we can flip it because it's not coming from the right direction. And this one's making more sense. Now what you might also want to do is when you find an image that you like, but you notice that the uh, lighting intensity is not matching, take it into Photoshop, dress it up, give it some more contrast, uh, and make it match the foreground. I mean, this is a brilliantly clear day. Let's, let's hit cancel on this and look at the foreground image. A brilliantly clear day, no haze in the sky whatsoever, and so your background, your sky replacement has to look the same. Let's look at the next image. Now, this is a sunrise image and the maroon bells in the same general area as this image. Okay, this is a sunrise image and I've always loved this shot except for the sky. Now I have an ability to go in and replace this sky. But again, you got to make sure that you're matching the direction of the sun. Now you can actually use sunset images in a sunrise image for obvious reasons. So let's go ahead and come up to image or edit sky replacement and let's let this self populate and that's not terribly bad i mean i don't like it from a you know subjective standpoint it's not what i'm looking for but it works all right maybe you think it doesn't i mean you ask 10 people and you get 10 different opinions all right so i don't see anything here i want to use now how do i add to this collection this very limited collection of sky replacements well what i'm going to do is click on this plus box down here and i'm going to come to this area nope that one's not going to work and this is the one i was looking for okay so we click on open and we add it to the collection and once you add it to the collection it's going to be there forever and then the next time you open the program then you've got something you can use now to me, you might not agree, I mean, everything is subjective, but to me, now we're cooking with gas. But both of these images were shot with the sun at about 5 to 10 degrees off the horizon, just cresting over the, the horizon, and it matches. It matches in tone, it matches in palette, it matches in everything. Now, the thing you want to do here is readjust the foreground and the reflection down here on the lake to more accurately reflect the color palette of the strong orange reflection that's going to come back down into this area. This is the Maroon Bells State Park near Aspen, Colorado. And so now we've got an image where the sky replacement makes sense. Now it's also a lot easier because we have nice solid edges right here. Okay, along the edge of the mountains, we've got a little bit of foliage right here, we've got a little bit of foliage right here. And we're in the next image we're going to take a look at, we'll show you how to refine those issues, but that works, okay? So let's go ahead and proceed. I'm going to go say okay to this one. We'll go to the next one, and this is one where it's not going to work, okay? So we'll come up, we go edit, sky replacement. Like I said, the last image I used is going to be the one that's going to fill in there. And... Uh, Let's see. <laughs> I haven't put this specific image in here before, but it looks like there is a possibility. But, you know, just from a subjective standpoint, I think we can do better. All right, let's look at one where it does work from a logistical standpoint. We can use this one, which I like a lot, or we can use this one. Either one of these two will work. One of the things I want to show you, now this one will probably work better than this one, okay, because we've got this little glow here along the edge of the dark or the foreground and so we'll say okay oops I messed up okay so I'm gonna go back on my history states I'm gonna come back I'm gonna load this again you see how if you mess up you can just go right back either by using the history states or hitting control Z okay we'll start again and we can do what's known as shift edge now I was pointing out this little glow that occurs along here all right, watch what happens when I run this over to the right. See how that improves a great deal? But now the thing we're having, the issue we're having, is that down here we've got a lot of blooming, what's called blooming, where is the light that exists in these tiny little areas around these tree branches. I mean, these are tiny, tiny little areas, okay? The light that was shining through here 
is also staying in this new image. It's, it's called blooming. And if you take a look and a full view on this, you can see where it's eating up some of the branches. Okay, now if we move this back, so it's just a matter of whether you want to adjust this and get everything just right. It's very hard to make it perfect, but I'm losing detail here. And look at this tree is almost gone. And so this image is not going to work. Now these pine needles right here are blurred out and that is one of the hardest things to fix in this whole process no matter what image processing software you're using. And I'm just going to play with this a little bit and you see that as I do that shift edge adjustment you lose the presence of those pine needles and you also lose the presence of this tree. So if I pull the shift edge back over here then it returns but we've got this glow. So unfortunately, sky replacement is not going to work on this image unless you don't mind losing some of the detail in these trees. Again, it's all subjective. Even though that's spectacular. I mean, there's Horsetail Fall right there. It's a wide shot. Uh, the sun matches up. Everything comes together from a logistical scientific standpoint. But, you know, the issue with these trees and this tiny little detail is something you just can't get around. And for me, I would just abandon the process here. I would just say, cut your losses, move along. So let's hit cancel. And then the last one is this image where it does work from a technical standpoint. Let's go ahead and take a look. And we'll hit sky replacement. And we'll put an image in there. Biff, bam, boom, you're done. Okay. But the problem you have right here is that the sky looks like it's way off in the distance where this image was shot with a 600 millimeter lens. So this sky should be closer. So what you want to do is you want to adjust the scale and you want to bring it in closer to match the focal length of the lens you were using. And you might want to move this around just to see if you know, you'll like a different composition. But that's another one of the considerations is that if you use a sky replacement that has a markedly different focal length orientation, you're going to have a problem. Now let's do some shift edge adjustment on this with that glow around the foreground. It's a very easy adjustment. Now this bush, Now again, let's, let's go in full view on this bush and make these adjustments and you'll see this bush come back. See how it comes back if I readjust that glow, but now we got the glow in there. So it's, you know, which, which evil would you rather live with? The glow or losing some detail in the bush? But it's a little bush. It's not the focal point of the image, so maybe it works. But those are the different scenarios now that you'll be confronted with on a pretty consistent basis when you start down this road of using sky replacement. You just have to be very careful with the sun orientation in a single image. You've got to be careful with the focal length matching. And also, very importantly, you've got to you know, say to yourself, hey, it's just not working on this image, so let me try something else. Let me just move on to another image. Uh, the more detail, I guess I should say, the more detail you have in the foreground, the more difficult it is to make this process work. So there's sky replacement in Photoshop.